I want to discuss basic core op amp circuits that you see pretty much used almost all the that show up almost all the time and get used and talked about all the time. I would say that the sort of core concepts from these ideas are probably ones you really want to you really want to devote to memory and devote to memory quickly. Um, because these there's sort of a core intuition here that you want to make sure that you get and that you can just kind of quickly see and work with circuits. So there's three of them in here, and the first one talking about is a voltage follower. And it has this interesting technique of the output voltage tied to the minus terminal of the op amp, where the plus terminal is tied to the input. Now there's a lot of different ways to analyze this circuit. The most interesting one is because of this particular feedback, the output voltage needs to stay in the power supply rails. Uh, that's kind of where it's going to operate, likely. So I'm expecting I have a very high gain here, so that means these two voltage terminals need to be pretty close to each other. Well, if these two terminals are close to each other, that means that this must this is the input. This terminal must be really close to the input. So the input and the output must be identical. And this is what you would find in general is that the output and the input are rough, relatively equivalent. Now you might say, why on earth would I make a circuit where the input the input is equal to the output? I could have used a wire, that would have worked just, just fine, thank you. Uh, except that, remember, the op amp doesn't actually um, take any current from here. It doesn't actually, anything that's going on over here doesn't show up, you know, isn't being loaded by what's going on over here. So it gives me a way to isolate or separate the two circuits. So this is what we would call as a buffer. And this is a very, very useful function clearly in instrumentation, but also in other kind of ways we build some of these circuits. So it's really an important kind of topology, and you'll see it used all over the place. Okay, Particularly uh, if you're building circuits and you're building a sort of core components, you're going to see it. Well, I can take this structure, which looks like a follower, and say, well, let me just still keep the input here, like in this case. But instead of making this just be a, a line where I'm putting having the output be entirely connected to the input, Maybe I'll just have some resistors between the two nodes. You know, so I don't entirely connect the output back to, to the minus terminal, but it's some, I'm dividing it down. There's a division, right, between the output and that connection. And you say, well, what would that do? Well, again, to make sure the output voltage is inside the power supply rails, I'm going to expect that this input voltage is going to need, need to be close to what the minus terminal will be. And so as a result, this, you know, I can start to write a very simple KCL and say that this node's roughly V in. Now, and so I'm just going to prox, I'm just going to say it's the input voltage. Again, don't be too, don't be spooked by this. This is just kind of interesting kind of way to do this very quickly. And if I write um, KCL at this node, I have one for this resistor and then one for this resistor. Solving this, what I end up finding, strange enough, is the output voltage over the input voltage is 1 plus R2 over R1. R2 is the one in the feedback, R1 is going to ground. So, here's an interesting thing. This gain will always be at least 1, because if I didn't have R1 here at all, uh, or, you know, basically didn't have this, this division at all, then basically, um, you know, if R2, basically R2 was effectively 0, this would just short out, it wouldn't matter, right? So the way you would talk about it is like, if, let's say this resistor wasn't there, then R2 is relatively zero compared to this, so it goes away. Okay, so it'd be one, just like the follower, but it then allows me to choose those resistors to choose a particular gain, <clears throat> some level bigger than one. And you think, wow, that's kind of cool. And this is one of the reasons people like this circuit. Well, there's a, there is a flip side of this, of what's called an inverting configuration, which basically takes a the input voltage and now directly picks a resistor into the minus terminal and then something in the feedback. Um, what you could imagine this voltage to this minus terminal here is setting a current and that current then goes through the second resistor. And if you think about that, I can basically write KCL at this node is Vn over R1 equals to minus V out because it's ground minus V out over R2. And rearranging it gives me V out over Vn is equal to R2 over R1. And so what we're going to find is that these expressions will be extremely important. And you're going to see this used again and again. And the intuition of these techniques are going to get used again and again almost everywhere. 
Um, these are about as valuable as knowing what a volt, uh, voltage divider is, um, either with resistors or capacitors. And so you really will want to make sure that you kind of remember these techniques.